Welcome to this week's episode of Inside the Headset presented by CoachCom. This week, we are featuring the 2023 Division II Coach of the Year panel. In this discussion, Cutstown head coach Jim Clements, Central Missouri head coach Josh Lamberson, Harding head coach Paul Simmons, and former Benedict College head coach Janice Berry discuss the special seasons they just completed and the important role the AFCA convention has played in their development as coaches. But first, a word from CoachCom. Deuce left, check with me. If they're in quarters match, we're going to Pittsburgh or Ohio. They're in zero, they're in zero. Let's go hippo Seattle wide choice. If we call the protection right, it's six. When a play call is the difference between winning and losing, your headset choice could be your most important decision. When the call counts, CoachCom is the only choice for clear, dependable communication. Visit CoachCom.com for more info. We got it, guys. Good job. Now, let's get inside the headset. Gentlemen, welcome uh, and congratulations on great seasons. Uh, congratulations on your peer group voting for you to be Regional Coach of the Year. I think that's one of the special things about this award is it's not necessarily voted on by the press or by boosters or by money or whatever. This is by your peer group, and I, I think that's really, really special. I, and you guys all had special seasons. That's actually where I want to start. I, I've always kind of found that uh, those unique special seasons, there are things that happen during the season to where there's a moment, there's, a, there's an attitude that you just kind of feel. And, and so I'd like for you guys just to kind of share each one of those, each, your own story and, and that kind of unique way of what happened this year. So we'll just go right down the line here if you don't mind. And so Jim, let's talk about your season and, and what made this one so special. I was, uh, we started out 0-2. So that wasn't how we wanted to start the season for sure. Um, we, we lost to Assumption on the road, and we went out to California and, and blew a 21-point lead in the fourth quarter. So that wasn't really how we wanted to start it. Yeah. But we, uh, we got through some adversity and, and just chipped away, and we ended up winning 12 straight in a row, which is a school record at Kutztown. Um, unbelievable kids. We played with a redshirt freshman at quarterback. Um, we had a redshirt freshman at right tackle. We had lost two of our starting offensive tackles to ACL injuries oh in the beginning of the year and, and our starting nose guard. So we had a lot of adversity, um, but we, we, you know, we, we got together and, and played unbelievable. Our defense really carried us for most part of the year. We had an overtime win. We had a couple close nail biters. Um, we had 30 kids get on the plane for the first time in their life. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> was awesome. We got to fly out to Golden, Colorado and, and play Mines, who's an unbelievable football team. And uh, just, the, just the experience that those kids had, and obviously it didn't go the way we wanted, but they had an unbelievable experience, and I was glad to be a part of it. Um, really, really, really great year for us at Kutztown. We, we, we have a lot of adversity at our school, and, and we've got great kids, blue-collar, tough kids that work hard and love each other. So it was a pleasure. I'm going to follow up here real quickly on that. You know, 0-2, um, there, probably had, there was probably some people on the football team, even maybe some administration going, hey, you know, we, we got to make some big changes. Did that actually happen? Did you have to make big changes? Or was it one of those things to where you just needed to grow up a little bit more? I think we did. I think we needed to mature a little bit. And... Um, um, and, and our guys really just, we, we, in 16, we won the East for the first time in school history. Well, we went undefeated for the first time in the East, and we started that season out 0-3. So we had some, we, we were able to go back from our history and say, hey, look, it, we're not out of it. You know, we, we still have an opportunity to win our conference, and if we do that, we, we still have everything in front of us. It's not the way we wanted to start, but... Um, we can get it done, and yeah, I mean, people were, you know, alumni emails and whatnot, and <laughs> then they all started coming at the end, so, hey, coach, great job, we, we didn't turn it around. I said, I wasn't out there playing, man, and my kids turned it around, our players turned it around, you know, <laughs> kind of lead them in the right direction, and, and they took over and uh, had an unbelievable, unbelievable ride. That's, that's awesome. Tennis, same question, I, I, again, another great year for you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, we kind of set our whole season in you know, a quote that I had heard. Um, the top of one mountain is the bottom of another mountain. So keep climbing. And uh, it's kind of how we went the whole entire year. You know, you know, we had a really good year in 2022. We went, you know, undefeated in our regular season. Then won a first time ever conference championship. 
think we had our first experience in the history of the school to be able to go to the Division II playoffs, and it didn't go well. Uh, we played a really good winged football team, and, and they, they beat us pretty good. And, of course, as we're all dealing with, season's over. You know, our starting quarterback, at the time he had another year, he decided to go into the transfer portal. And, uh, you know, of course, the media and the uh, alumni administration said, what are you guys going to do when your starting quarterback leaves? So we kind of made that fuel us through the season. And, you know, one, no one guy, obviously, you don't want to lose your quarterback. Uh, but, you know, we felt like we had a really good foundation of young men that are really bought into our program. And that kind of challenged them to the point where we're going to do this regardless of what, and we're going to uh, – you know, have a great year. So we kind of fueled us our whole entire off season through off season conditioning, and uh, we end up signing another guy. We end up signing a guy from a, a rival conference, um, and uh, he end up coming in with one year eligibility remaining, and and then we end up having another undefeated season. Um, and and again, just one guy won't stop us from doing what we want to do. But it, it really fueled us, and we, we what a remarkable year. First of all, you know, our coaches were really bought in. With shared values, I, mean, I was able to retain my staff as well. You know, that's kind of tough, you know, just being able to retain. We talk about in our program, we talk about our philosophy is we want to recruit them, retain them, develop them, and then graduate them. Well, it's the same way with the coaches. We want to recruit good coaches. Right. But we want to be able to retain good coaches. And, uh, and, and sometimes you aren't able to do, you're not able to do that when you have a good year. So, you know, obviously we're a limited resource institution. And, but the results are still what the people want us to win and go one and zero. And our philosophy every day, and we it's kind of fueled us our whole season. We didn't talk about the end goal. Everybody wants championships, you know. When you come in, you know, we want to win the championship and have a great year. But we just focused on uh, a book that we read as a football team, and we read it every training camp. Is uh, Chop Wood, Carry Water by Joshua Metcalf, and it just talks about surrendering the outcome and falling in love with the process of becoming great. And we were just process oriented, you know, fall in love with going to study hall, fall in love with going to the weight room, fall in love with those two, three hour practice times. So fall in love with all the things that don't look good on the outside and just fall in love with being the best we can be every day. And our young men just really start buying into that. So we're about halfway through the season. We're five and oh, we're six and oh, we're rolling. And you ask our players and media and they'll say, well, how are you guys doing? You guys are having a great year. You're six and oh right now. They just focus on one and oh. Guys, we're one and all. We're just focusing on winning the day, being the best we can be every day. Because at the end of the day, when you hadn't had a lot of success as a program in the history of Benedict College, and, you know, people start patting them on the back. In the cafeteria, the lady gives you an extra piece of chicken. You know, people in the community telling them how great they are, you know, and, and it gets to the point where they start hearing the outside noise. But our young men were really born into falling in love with the process and going one and all every day and that really fueled our whole entire season and we ended up having a remarkable season again uh got into the playoffs again had a first round buying fell a little short uh, against a really really good lenore ryan football team we ended up falling short uh, 35 25 but a great experience for our young men uh what a, what a remarkable year two-time back-to-back conference champion first time again in the history of the school so our, our young men were just bought into our process of just going one and know every day that's great yeah I, uh you guys know, uh, you know Todd Knight, our president uh, this year, um, Division II coach. I spent some time in Division II early on in my career. Um, I went to Todd's game, uh, his final game uh, uh, against Henderson, you know, which has kind of got some history to that thing. And uh, there is, it was so nice because I go to a lot of games, but I always go to the, our, one of our president's games. Mm -hmm. And there is some tremendous purity about Division II football. And I hate that the transfer portal, and this is kind of what made me think of it, that is, it's, it's starting to work its way through that because, you know, that, that is such a plague right now on FBS uh, in relation to, you know, the interactions that coaches and players have a chance to have. And it's something that, that uh, is, it's a sad state of affairs. But whenever you kind of mentioned some of the obstacles that is kind of starting to filter down right now in, into D2, and that's 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 too bad because it is, it's a fun game to watch. My wife, whenever we traveled down there, and yeah, you know, there's my wife's not quite ready to, for me to get out of this yet, <laughs> uh, and she was like, you know, you need to go back to Division Two and coach football in Division Two because this is where it's fun. This is where all that other stuff doesn't happen, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, Josh, uh, congratulations. Great season. Let's talk about your season. Thank you. Appreciate it. You know, um, 
kind of unique in the fact that entering into the season, we came off a four and seven season in, in 2022. And so we had a lot of, of kind of doubt, uh, some unknown, um, you know, coming into the, to this year and um, made some coaching changes. Um, we're able to go and, and get some players and, and kind of utilize the transfer portal a little bit um, from the roster that, that I had inherited early on and in my tenure there going into my second year. And so really didn't know our identity. We didn't know our people uh, all that well. You know, even coming into the season, had some, had some late additions to our football program, even to our coaching staff coming into the summer. Um, and as we all know, you know, football is the, the greatest melting pot of our society. Uh, when you can get different people into the room from really all facets of life, uh, areas of the country, socioeconomic status, everything. And so I think uh, our season was really about growth and about coming together and really some unique ways for, for people from all different aspects of life to, to experience a, a common goal and, and to really go after that and to watch that come together, which I thought was really special this year. And, um, you know, it, it really kind of clicked for us actually after a loss. Uh, we, were, we were undefeated uh, playing Pittsburgh State University early on in the season. I think they were, uh, they were ranked in the top five in the country. And, um, you know, we up to that point had done some pretty good things um, and going into that game our, our guys were were excited but they still didn't really know how good they were uh, hadn't played a ranked opponent yet um, and so going into that game we were we were excited but didn't really know go into the game and it's a fantastic football game you know Pittsburgh State um, they, they do a wonderful job up there uh, foundational program in division two and uh, the game came down to, to really one of the last plays of the game. We fell one point short. But after the game was over, there was a confidence in our locker room that really resonated with our players and our coaching staff and um, that they were, they were capable. And really, we based our entire year on a couple different things. And one that we showed our, a slide, it was the very first slide that we showed in every team meeting. It said, demand the give. And to get our guys to understand that we are blessed with phenomenal gifts, each one of us, and, and they're different for everybody. And the fact that uh, we have an obligation to, to give those gifts away every single day, whether they're physical gifts, mental gifts, spiritual gifts, relational gifts, whatever they are. Um, but to focus on the give rather than the get. And I, I think we can all attest up here that uh, unfortunately in our society, the, the get is what everybody's after. Um, and you, that's not going to happen unless you really just focus on the give. And so we tried to do that. Our, our mission statement was to be the best versions of ourselves physically, mentally, spiritually, and to elevate those around us to do the same. Everything counts. And we wanted to lay on our bed at night at the end of the day and say that we exhausted our God-given gifts every single day and that we were going to wake up tomorrow and do the same thing over and over and over again. We felt like if we did that, then ultimately the get would come if we focused on the give. And then the other thing that we really focused on was uh, three things that were non-negotiables in our program. Um, you know, we weren't going to yell at kids. If I, I assume that when they go out to practice every single day, we're going out to those games, that they're going to give their best effort. I don't think anybody walks out onto the practice field or on the game and just says, you know, I'm really going to stink it up today. I'm not going to listen to the coach. I'm going to drop every pass or I'm going to get out of my gap and I'm just going to be a really bad football player today. I don't assume that they do that. I assume that they're going to go out and ultimately try the very best that they can, pull the rope in the same direction. So where we got to in our program was these three things that I think uh, were really foundational and, and they will be moving forward. But the first thing was believe in yourself and, and not the superficial um, putting things out on social media that, that puffs our chest up or things like that, but really looking in the mirror um, and having confidence that we made the decisions in the dark, the right decisions in the dark to ultimately shine in the light. And believing in ourselves that we've done everything in our power to prep for those moments that, not just in games, um, but on Saturday night after games, that we are going to make the right decisions to ultimately uh, be the best versions of ourselves. So the belief in ourselves. Uh, the second thing was work hard and work hard in every facet of your life and not just the the in the weight room where we're trying to push a lot of weight around or out on the practice field or things like that but work hard in in our relationships work hard in our spiritual development work hard in the classroom work hard in every facet of our life that you are shocked when it doesn't work out um and then the last thing was was have fun 
uh, I think that uh, amidst the, the scoreboards and um, the statistics and all the other social pressures that our young people face that we forget that, that this is a game that those guys have played in their backyard and they started playing it because it was fun. And our challenge, the last thing I would always say to our guys before we would go out on the field was have more fun than anybody else in college football today and tried to embody that. And I told our coaching staff the same thing, that you're only guaranteed so many of these things. We're all on ticking time bombs for our clock. The, the college football Saturdays are sacred days and eventually they're gonna run out for all of us. So you might as well enjoy the mess out of them every single day. Um, and then the last thing that, that ultimately we, we talked about was we, we don't keep score by what the scoreboard tells us that we are. And you know I'm up here with, with some fantastic coaches and they've kind of said this already, but from the standpoint of, I wasn't gonna love my kids any different regardless of what the scoreboard said, regardless of what the stats said after the game, or you know we were gonna treat our kids with love and respect. We were gonna be kind. Uh, we were gonna love them enough to tell them the truth. And um, you know everybody bought into those things in our program. And um, the, the way that it all kind of came together in, in a relatively short fashion uh, was really, really special. And I think that's the thing that we'll remember most about this season was um, everybody pulling the rope in the same way and uh, focusing on the give rather than the get. And ultimately the, the get came for, for quite a few of us. It's interesting you said something that kind of resonated with me just a little bit in the fact that um, all the great players that I was around, um, and I'm talking about the ones that survived and kept, uh, they, wanted to, they wanted to win every day in everything in their life. And I never did quite comprehend, and I would challenge the players all the time about, you know, it might be the classroom, it might be the relationship, it might be, why would you not want to be the best you in, in everything that you do? And the moment that you get to that point, then you get a chance to win. Well, I jumping in on that, you know, I'm very fortunate. Um, been able to coach two Harlan Hill winners, uh, the Division II best player Absolutely. in the country, and um, so blessed in that regard. But I, I think if you look at a common trait with both of those two young men, they were the most competitive people, not just out on the field, but it could be playing ping pong in the locker room. It could be playing cards on a bus ride. It could be doing anything that, uh, that had a competitive value in it. They wanted to be the best in everything that we were doing. And I think that when you have those type of people, uh, that are leaders in your program, I think that resonates throughout your program and sure. it just elevates everybody around. Sure. Paul, congratulations on regional coach of the year, but also you got some bigger hardware. Congratulations on the national championship. I know that uh, Harding has uh, been a special program for a long time uh, in the same sense too. This was a special year uh, for you guys this year. Let's talk about your year. Well, I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> you know, a, a lot of the things these guys I have talked about. I could echo that. Um, maybe, maybe the area that we're um, different than others is we 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 try to uh, we don't talk about winning. Um, you know, 2022, we had a really special bunch of seniors, just uh, warriors that loved each other, that were great leaders. But we ended up, lost a couple of close games. We went 9-2. and two. And so we didn't go to the playoffs for the first time since 2015. And, and I mean, it broke my heart to see those guys feel like failures, mm -hmm. right? Because they were anything but failures. And, you know, I, I doubled down on my desire for our, for our, uh, for our goals to never involve winning. You know, when, when our, our day one meetings are like, man, what are we doing? What are we about? What, what is the focus of this team? And, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to bait some young guy into saying, well, we're going to win the national championship. So then I can say, guys, that's not, that's not the goal. That will never be the goal. The goal for us uh, is something that we can control a lot more than that. And that goal is to try to have the best culture in the country in college football. And that's, that's, that's where we start, and that's what we talk about. And, and for us, you know, that's, that's defined by honoring God. You know, when, when that's the umbrella, you know, what, what, what fits underneath that? You know, uh, awesome accountability honors God. Work ethic honors God. Um, one of the most important things that honors God that also fits on Saturday is, is, is putting your team 
in front of your own goals. You know, I'm, you know, my my stats, my goals, those things are not important. This football team is is uh, is the most important thing. A sense of loyalty, a sense of humility, a sense of gratefulness. You know, all of these things honor God, and that is what we're gonna we're gonna pursue that like crazy. And but we're also gonna pursue excellence, and then. And then, but the, the beautiful thing is when you do those things really, really well, um, then the scoreboard takes care of itself. Yeah, it does. And, uh, you know, I said this a lot of times this year, um, you know, every team that, that I've ever coached had one or two guys that were the no doubt alphas. These are the guys, these are the leaders, these are the special ones. Uh, I, I really do believe that this football team um, had 18 to 20 guys that in any other year would have been the guy, right? The guy. Um, so we really did have um, special leadership. Uh, I think this this group had an extra measure of uh, maturity about themselves. Uh, you know, when you watch any any level of football, um, if you watch college football any Saturday, it's really common to see. Uh, a, a, a Georgia or a, 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 an Alabama a school that level playing a team that that might have three or four wins and they come out and they kind of play to that level for a half and the game is really close at half and then they just exert their dominance and they they pull away because it's it's hard emotionally to get it every single week sure. right it's so challenging but that's that's a way that this team stood out they, they never did that I mean, they were able to get ready to play, and the the teams that we should have blown out, we we, we blew out. Um, I mean, they were they just got ready to play every single week, and uh, that was really evident in our last ball game. You know, we we uh, of course we don't have any experience playing in the national title game, and um, you know, something that really stands out to me is I I, I made a big mistake. It was Monday of the national championship game. The game's in McKinney in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And we have a huge network following down there. And um, I walked in on a meeting that I was not a part of and they were planning the Friday night activities. These, this is what's gonna happen. Uh, there, there's gonna be a, there's a big event center downtown and the band's gonna play. And of course, the, you know, our hotel's miles away and and I said, so you're telling me that we got old bisons from every generation that's going to come back and be here, guys that we hadn't seen in 30 years, and we're not even going to see them? I mean, shouldn't we get together at the hotel? Shouldn't, shouldn't we have a, a reunion at the hotel together? Well, uh, so the title game is also on graduation day. So we had 14 young men that were going to miss graduation. But before you know it, um, that, that idea turned into we're going to have uh, a reunion slash pep rally slash graduation ceremony and the president's going to fly down on the plane. We're going to and um, when when that news got out, my coaches, I mean, they all looked at me like, well, coach, what are you doing? What, <laughs> what have you done? Because, you know, we are so regimented on Friday. This is our routine the demeanor of our team in the hotel I and mean, when we are all about business there is no distractions and i'm telling you friday night before the title game it was complete chaos <laughs> i mean there were thousands of people in that hotel now you talk about a beautiful beautiful event i mean we we had a giant ballroom we, we paraded the players in we had a graduation ceremony the president said normally i would ask you to hold your applause to the end, but I mean, we are going to celebrate every young man. That's awesome. They called their name, and we raised the roof. We sang the Lord bless you and keep you. We sang the alma mater. And I'm telling you, there was not a dry eye in the house. I mean, I'm sitting there, I'm crying my eyes out just because of this, this reunion of people that, that love each other so much, so much. But then I thought, man, I've, I've blown it. I've blown it from my guys because it was so chaotic because everyone wanted to everybody wanted to be around my guys and put put our hands on them and love on them and and tell them how, how great they were but we had a game to play 
Okay, and I just thought I, I, I've blown it for our guys. And then uh, in the first drive of the game, Mines gets the ball first, and, and, and they came out, and, and we were so uncharacteristic. We had three or four bus, we had a coverage bus, we had 12 guys on the field in the red zone, which hasn't happened to us one time all year, and I thought, I, I've blown it. I've blown it for our guys. Uh, obviously, they got things turned around, uh, but I think that that wave of, uh, of, of energy and, and unity from that night carried over. Um, but, you know, just a, just a, a special um, bunch of guys that, that really, really loved each other. Um, you know, there's a lot of things about Harding that are, that are unique and that are special. Uh, one of those things is I hired a guy this past spring to coach on our staff and he didn't play at Harding. Well, he's the first guy to coach full-time on our staff that didn't play there probably in, in 40 years. We all played there. How about that? The last head coach preached my wedding. You know, Harding football means everything to me. You know, I, 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 uh, I came to Harding as a, as, a, as a very immature, foolish, selfish person and, and that place basically saved my life. And, uh, you know, I want nothing more than to make the brotherhood proud. And, and not, not, not proud of how we win, but proud of how we compete, how we love each other, uh, how we have a sense of integrity in class and um, the sense of loyalty. You know, it means the world to me to come through uh, for, for that brotherhood. And so, um, very, very surreal. Um, you know, Coach Simmons, great job. You, you finally have accomplished what you've been dreaming about and, and praying about. I hadn't been praying about a national championship. I hadn't been dreaming about it. It felt like there was an Atlantic Ocean between us and, and that. You know, we're just trying to figure out how to, how to keep from getting embarrassed, you know, just how to, how to, how to, how to win the next day. Um, but a uh, special year and, and uh, really felt like uh, God blessed the, the entire situation and um, you know it was it was hard it was really hard uh, we had a we had a couple of absolute wars uh, this guy provided a war for us you know we had we had back-to-back -back, uh, one point wins versus um, awesome opponents you know these guys uh, that was a that was such a uh, such a back and forth wild affair um, the Grand Valley game was, was one of the most physical wars I've ever been a part of in my life. And, um, you know, both of those games, I, I feel like uh, it was huge for us to be at home, to have them at home. Um, our, our fans were, were amazing this year, but um, just an awesome, awesome experience. That's great. Awesome. Let, let's talk a little bit. Uh, I, I think um, I mentioned off air that I was so propelled by my first AFCA convention, and I, I just find it just fascinating that, he, you know, in, in a business area, you're you're not going to have Microsoft and Apple sharing ideas, right, and and thoughts, and how do how do I win? How do I drop this play? Not just the play, but the nuances. And I think it's one of the things that's really special here is about collectively we get together, and we just want to help promote football and and. You know, uh, so again, we'll just go right down the line here. What's the AFCA meant to you? What, what, what's what been special for you? Well, I, my, uh, my college coach was Bill Manlove, and Bill was the president of the AFCA. Outstanding man. One of my, you know, mentors and yeah. just unbelievable. Bill and Edna are here running around yeah, still. And um, so when I got done, <clears throat> I always wanted to coach. I always I figured my best way to coach would be at, go to school and be an educator because all my coaches were teachers. And um, once I got an opportunity to, to coach in high school, then I came back and coached at college where I played. Um, Bill made sure that, hey, you, you know, you need to go down to the convention. And our head coaches at the time, Bill Cubitt, I was playing for Billy Cubitt, and he's like, Jimmy, come on down. And they paid my way. And um, it was an unbelievable experience. I jumped on the elevator with Coach Bowden. Uh, chasing Coach Paterno around, you know, that guy just didn't have to say hi. I just wanted to be near their presence. Maybe something would, <laughs> rub, would off rub off on me. And uh, 
I just really enjoyed it as a young coach and uh, learned a lot. And then, you know, 25, 28 years of coaching, just coming back and seeing some of the same guys and um, enjoying their experience about how they did that season and what they're going to. And you always come away uh, energized. You know, you come back and you meet your team and, you know, you're back for that spring semester and you're, you got more juice, you know, and you're, you're ready to go. And just listening to you three guys, is getting me fired up to go back and talk to my guys and get this thing going back again. So I really enjoy it. Um, I enjoy the relationships. That's why I got into coaching. Uh, it's for the kids and the relationships. So it's another area for us to build relationships with other coaches and learn from what they're doing and, and how they're treating their guys. Um, I enjoy it. I think it's a great, great, great experience. Um, I push all our guys to come down as much as possible. So, yeah. Yep. Tennis, same, same question. Well, everything about the AFCA, I completely love everything about it. Um, just an opportunity, first of all, to get a chance to network with like-minded individuals, guys with shared values, just to hear, like I say, just to hear the gentleman up here just to say a few things. I'm putting in my mental Rolodex things that I can help, you know, build our program. And I tell our coaches all the time, it's, it's very important to me, and this is year 30, in college football for me, and I, I make it a point to go every year. I believe if you're green, you're growing, and uh, when you feel like you got it all figured out, then that's when the <laughs> game will pass you by. And, and sometimes, you know, I was just sharing with one of my, my young OC that was in the lobby with him a minute ago before I came in here, how wonderful that this is. And I make it apparent, you know, of course we have limited budgets on our level, but I make sure that throughout the year that I raise money so I don't have administration say that we don't have the resources to be able to go. And I want to make sure that every year, every coach in our program is here. Regardless of where it's at, we're going to be at the AFCA convention. And just to be able to network, learn little, different ideas and different nuances, how, how to build what we're trying to build in every day. And just, you know, I tell them just, you know, when you guys go here, when we come back, I have something I may be a little different. When they get back, they're going to have to present something on what they learn while they're here. You know, a PowerPoint presentation, I don't want them to just be here and, and not make a difference. I want to be here and learn and grow and shake a hand and network and, and be able to, uh, you know, just build relationships. Because we know, as we know, guys, this is a relationship-driven business. And, you know, and uh, it's, a, it's not who you know, it's who knows you, you know, ultimately at the end of the day. And I'm all about promoting our coaches uh, and, and giving them uplift and increase, you know. The prayer of Jabez says in larger territory in a special way and, and increase. And uh, I'm all about increasing, but the only way you're gonna increase, you gotta continue to network and continue to grow. And, uh, and, and, and iron sharpens iron as well, because of you I'm better and because of me you're better. And, and I really believe in that wholeheartedly. And uh, I'm, I'm learning, just sitting up here today with these gentlemen here, just some of the things that they're sharing and their stories and their journey. You know, that journey is something special. So I have a, a mental Rolodex, and I'm going to go over here in my notes app when it's almost <laughs> said and done, just to be able to write those things down and be able to add value to my program and, and the people that, the young men that are uh, entrusting, you know, that I'm entrusted with every day to be able to nourish and grow and develop. So, you know, I'm in a, in a, a fortunate situation where I'm leaving a great, job and a great situation and getting ready to start and build my brand and build our our culture in a new place and uh, I'm excited about the challenge and I'm excited about the opportunity but you know the things that we'll learn and grow here we'll get a chance to pour into the program that the good Lord has blessed me to be able to, to lead God and direct. Absolutely. Josh same question for you. So Mel Churchma was uh, was my college football coach former president of the AFCA as well and um, so early on when I was getting my graduate degree, he, he really instilled the importance of the AFCA. And I, I remember my, my first general session that I went to and, and you walk in um, and the unbelievable amount of people that are there with their notebooks out. And um, it, it was beyond standing room only. People were outside of, of the doors um, of the ballroom and, and sitting there just trying to take notes and, and increase and to get better. And, I think one of the really neat things, I've, I've got a couple of my coaches, this is their first convention, and you walk into the lobby and you see their faces. Uh, and, and whether it's a coach that they've seen on TV or a coach that we've competed against or you know whatever the case is, they, they see so many different people from so many different 
walks of life and, and levels and things like that. And they realize that we're all just people. You know, at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're all just guys that are ultimately trying to, to make other people's lives better. And we're coaches. And I, I think if you really want to make a difference in this world, come to the AFCA convention and, and look at the thousands of coaches that are here that are trying to pour into young people's lives, specifically young men's lives. Uh, they're trying to make them better and not not necessarily by a scheme or, or a fundamental or a technique of how to run past block or things like that, but how they can go out and ultimately be better husbands, be better fathers, be better leaders of our community and of our world. Um, so I, I think if you come to the AFCA and you see all of these people that are truly, sincerely, genuinely invested in the young people that they get to work with every single day, I, I think you, you realize how powerful this platform of coaching really is and the ripple effect that all of us can have on our society and our world in general. And it's, a, it's not something that, that we take lightly. Um, and I think it's a, it's a wonder, wonderful, wonderful gift that, that we've been given. And I think uh, the people that are committed to come down here uh, to learning how to grow and how to get better and how to invest uh, you know, in their program, I think it's a really special thing. That's great. Paul, bring us home. Well, I tell you, uh, I'm a little bit different. I, I probably uh, am a little bit late to the game, a little bit late taking advantage of this opportunity. Uh, for you know, I, it, when I was young, I always thought that that going to the convention was was about trying to find a better job, and I and I I wasn't that guy. I've had two jobs in my entire life, and so I was like, you know, I'm I'm a, I don't need to be there. But I, I realized how wrong that I was. You know, it's it's. Uh, Certainly, that's going on, but that's that's not the focus of the convention at all. You know, there's a there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of important information changing hands. But for me, um, it's it's become a lot more of um, man, just the special people that you get to be around, that you get to meet, um, and you know, this is a this is a, uh, a high anxiety profession. This is a profession that will beat you up. It will, it will, it will wreck you. Um, and so, it, it, you know, all of us at times in our life have been in, in a spot where we needed to be encouraged by somebody we respected. Okay, and then, but we also have had a lot, a lot of opportunity to to say to somebody. Hey man, look, I, I know that you guys got let go, but man, you 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 can do it. You're enough. You know, you're gonna be back on your feet, and and you know that that goes on here, uh, unbelievably. I just um, for me, the to to get to be here and 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 be around coaches that I hold in the highest regard, not because they're X's and O's, but because of the way they lead, the way they treat people, their their sense of class and dignity. Um, to be exposed to that and and to 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 get life spoken into me from those guys is is, is invaluable. It, it is it's invaluable. Um, I really do think that um, you know what we're doing. This is the most noble profession there is, and it's the most important. I mean, our our, our country is absolutely broken, and and we need men. We need we need young men that are willing to lead, that know how to lead, and um, you know, it's it's up to all of us to, to to lead really, really well, way beyond X's and O's, and just for for so many of us to be together, uh, encouraging one another, speaking life into one another, reminding one another of what what really, really matters beyond scheme, beyond winning, um, is awesome. And you know, anybody who is not taking this two or three days to, to come and be a part of this is missing out. And I'll tell you the other thing, it's become, uh, uh, you know, I bring my wife. You know, my, my, my wife's going to be here and, um, you know, I take a lot of pride in there being 10,000 coaches and, you know, my wife and I are walking through there holding hands and uh, I just want her to be a part of it. I, I don't want it to be a, a, a time when I, when I leave her and go run off with the boys, you know. Um, and I'm I'm proud of her. I'm Absolutely. proud of I'm proud of uh, the role she plays in in what we do. And but I'm a fool. I learned last night that there's a, a coach's wives FCA. She, it, actually, she learned that. Yeah, that's Mel true. Mel Churchman's wife 
yeah. was like, where, where have you been? And she's like, I didn't know. And she looked at me. I'm like, baby, I didn't know. You know, I mean, so I, you know, I got to I got to take her to a nice dinner to. She's like, you've been holding out on me. I'm like, I didn't know, you know. Um, so that that seems to be a, an awesome opportunity. But, um, yeah, the AFCA is an, an amazing organization and it's, and it's built for the very the very uh, best reasons for sure. I appreciate all those comments immensely and guys again congratulations on Regional Coach of the Year. Uh, congratulations on uh, your role that, as all of you talked about in terms of what what you're trying to accomplish in your programs and serving young people. Uh, great testament to who you are uh, and the level that you're at too. So we appreciate that. Thank you all. Thank you. Coachcom has been delivering tough headsets for tough teams for more than 31 years. It's why 97% of FBS teams in thousands of high schools across the country rely on Coachcom. Get the best for your team. Visit coachcom.com for more info. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Inside the Headset, presented by Coachcom. If you'd like to learn more about this week's episode, head over to afca.com. There, you can access every episode and find corresponding show notes. Remember, you can catch every episode of Inside the Headset presented by Coach Com on wherever you get your podcasts, including Spotify, Apple, and YouTube. While you're there, we'd love for you to take a moment to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. Your feedback helps us improve and grow. Keep up with the latest news by following us on social media. Connect with us at Inside the Headset, and remember to tag us when you share your favorite episodes. For more updates on all things AFCA, be sure to follow the at We Are AFCA social media accounts. If you're not a part of the AFCA community yet, visit AFCA.com to join thousands of NFL, college, and high school coaches nationwide and across the globe. Elevate your coaching game with an AFCA membership. You'll gain exclusive access to the annual AFCA convention, magazine, digital library, and AFCA insider email. Stay up to date with the latest stories and news on the AFCA website. More than just a convention, the AFCA offers continuous education, guidance, network, and more. Celebrate the past and shape the future with the AFCA. It's about fostering exceptional coaches who create outstanding teams and even better individuals. Invest in your skills and make a lasting impact today by engaging with the AFCA. Your journey starts here.